Terry Riken, your broker with a personal touch, proudly presents Ken Boxer Live. Hi, you're watching Ken Boxer Live with Ken Boxer and Ty Babylonia. You're going to have so much fun. Oh, yeah. From the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, it's Ken Boxer Live with your host, Ken Boxer and co-host, two-time Olympian Ty Babylonia. Please welcome Ken and Ty. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And thank you. We're back. And thank you for watching. I'm Ken Boxer. Let me introduce to you my lovely, very talented co-host, the two-time Olympian, five-time national champion, and she is world champion, as well as now, can you believe it? Hall of Famer in the Ice Skating Hall of Fame. Let's welcome Ty Babylonia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hi, Ken. Hi, good to see you. Thank you. Great tell, seeing you. Well, you know, it's been a while, so yes. tell our audience, what was it like receiving the Hall of Fame honors? Being inducted into this Hall of Fame, it's, um, see, Randy and I have been together 48 years. Unbelievable. So it's, um, it's, it's really a combination of, of all our achievements and that we've stayed together this long is what, why we got it. But what made it special was our coach, Mr. Nix, who took us through two Olympics, presented it to us. So that's what made it so special to, to us and my whole family was there. It was in Las Vegas at right. Planet Hollywood. It was a great night and Lisa Capri was there. She's in the audience. It was wonderful. So I'm honored. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. Thank you. I got it in. <laughs> yeah, we Tell our audience who we have tonight. Oh my goodness, I, I met her in the makeup room um, for the first time. I couldn't believe that was the first time you ever met. She, yes, it is, and she's lovely. She was part of the, you know, biggest film, uh, E.T., as we all know. Um, actress, author, healer, the lovely Dee Wallace is with us here tonight. And I'm right. so excited. All right. Yes. Yay! Ken Boxer Live, brought to you in part by The Eagle Inn, a family-owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. Harborview Inn, welcome to Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. La Quinta Inn and Suites, conveniently located in downtown Santa Barbara. Now back to Ken Boxer Live. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are back. Joining us tonight is the very accomplished actress and author, teacher, dancer, and radio hostess, Dee Wallace. Dee is best remembered for her role as young Elliot's mother in the iconic film E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Now, with over 40 years in film, television, and stage, and with five published books, Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Emmy Award nominee, the lovely, very talented Dee Wallace. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. I just want to say, look at these legs. We look oh, Dee, thank you. Look at that. Look at your legs, girlfriend. Oh, my you look goodness. amazing. Thank you. Doesn't amazing. she? Yes. Very amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I always like to ask, I like to ask our guests, have you been to Santa Barbara before? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, when you're here, what do you usually like doing? Go to the beach. Nice. Uh, and a lot of people lots do. of nice, you know, dinners. Yeah. Great, great dinners in great Santa dinners. Barbara. Yes. Great well, shopping. Well, I want to know, you were, let's see, born and raised in Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas. Now, how does a young gal come from Kansas to make it into Hollywood? Follow, let's go through that trail. Story. Well, I had never been out of Kansas in my life. And I taught a year of high school, and I thought, if I don't leave now, I'm never going to get out of here. <laughs> so I moved to New York City, and um, right away, um, let's see, what did I get first? I, I got my equity card first. And, and that's not easy to do, by the way. 
to just get, you know, starting well, out to get yeah, your equity card. Yeah, like, but I was a dancer, you see, so. But you I laughed when to, I, I when went I, to an open audition. But right? when I introduced you and said dancer, you started <laughs> laughing. Yeah, that laugh. I got that laugh. I making a very long list. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I do do all those things. Yeah. I well, certainly do. Okay, um, from you got so your anyway, card. So I got my card, and then, of course, I went on a date, and the date took me to a Halloween party. And at the Halloween party, his agents were there. And his agent said, oh, you look like a nice girl from Kansas. You want to come join our agency? Oh, my and goodness. I said, oh, what do you do? And they said, we're the top agents in New York. And I went, okay. So wow. um, I did, and I literally had $4.10 to my name because, Amazing. you know, in Kansas, what I took to New York would have gone a lot further. Right, and, right. Um, and I booked a United Airlines commercial. You want to see what I did? Sure. Okay. Wait, what Wait. year? So what year was this? Oh, who Seven knows? <laughs> Seventies. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, this is what I did. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and you got the gift. And I made $28,000. Hello. Oh, and I was see? hooked. I so love that. I was hooked. But I did a lot of commercials. <laughs> sir, but you went from dancing to into commercials or into acting? I mean, where was the leap from well, dancing? Well, I went to New York to be a, an actress. Um, I had, that's what I got my degree in, is theater education and psychology and journalism. <laughs> well, did, did, well, did you and have, dancing. Did you have a lot of support from your family to take that drive to New well, York? Well, no. No. I mean, I always had a lot of support from my family to be an actress, but my mother's words were, be an actress, Dee Dee, just do it here in Kansas. Oh, as a hobby? Or well, as and that's what she, my mother was a beautiful, beautiful actress. She was really my first mentor and teacher. And Didn't um, she give you your first acting? <laughs> I know that story, oh, remember? That's right. Tell them what your first acting my first job was. Acting so job funny. was Baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like in the manger. Sex, but nobody in the Methodist church cared. <laughs> <laughs> so I, my mother I was that. a beautiful actress, and she produced and directed the religious plays at our church. And so I started out as Baby Jesus and went all through the ranks I think I was even a shepherd sometimes, <laughs> and ended up as the Virgin Mary. I love it. I <laughs> love yeah, that. I usually was the tree. Those kind of right. plays, you know? I played the tree. But that's how but it started. Let's go yes, but from, my mom was the director, so. Oh, there you go. You had the <laughs> end. the starring parts. <laughs> but let's go from this now. We're going to take the leap because we're always going to run out of time. Yeah. Let's E.T., let's, how that came about. We're going to, let's for show. Well, sure, let's for show. It's not such a big leap, actually. Really? I was in New York for two years and did a lot of commercials and got really close to some plays. And I did a lot of industrials because I was a dancer and that was a great way for actresses to make money while they were trying to get discovered. Right. So I danced across America in, <laughs> as a Kugel peanut. <laughs> peanut butter, I don't know, if it, Kugel peanut butter. Right. And um, I had a friend out here and he said, oh gosh, the I'll get you an interview with my theatrical agent if you'll get me an interview with your commercial agent. So we did, and we both got signed. Amazing. And, um, and I was on my way, and I got my first job by baking cookies because you couldn't get on the lots, and you still can't. So I, I thought, what would we do if we wanted to meet people in Kansas. Well, we would bake cookies and take it over <laughs> Are there. you serious? I'm totally serious. And I baked a lot of chocolate chip cookies and wrapped them all up in cellophane, which my daughter <laughs> and I still do every Christmas. And I went to Universal Studios and I said to the guard, hi, you know, I'm uh, delivery. I have a delivery. Oh my God. And he said, yeah, go on through. This so, is so wild. To make a long story really short, I, <laughs> I took uh, cookies to Reuben Cannon, who was one of the top guys there. And he said, oh, well, come on in, because he liked chocolate chip cookies. And I was sitting there, and they called from the set of Lucas Tanner and said, the girl who was supposed to play the waitress is sick. <gasps> what do you want us to do? And he 
covered the phone. He says, what size do you wear? I said, what size do you need? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing story. And I stuffed myself into that size four. I love costume. it. And that was my first five lines on film. That's, That's a great, great story. Great story. That's great. Okay. Let's now go to... Let's let's e. go to we're gonna go to ET. E. We're gonna let's That's watch a, a video and then okay. we'll talk about it All when right. we come out of this video. Okay, okay? let's watch right. D Wallace, ET. E. What are you going as for Halloween? I'm not going to stupid Halloween. Why don't you go as a goblin? Shut up. It's not that we don't believe you, honey. Well it was real, I swear. Maybe it was an iguana. It was no iguana. Maybe a, uh, uh, you know how they say there are uh, alligators in the sewers? Alligators in the sewers. All we're trying to say is maybe you just probably imagined it. I couldn't happened. have imagined it. Maybe uh, an elf or a leprechaun. It was nothing like that, penis breath. Elliot, <laughs> sit down. <clears throat> Dad would believe me. Maybe you ought to call your father and tell him about it. I can't. He's in Mexico with Sally. Where's Mexico? Excuse me. If you ever see it again, whatever it is, don't touch it, just... Call me and we'll have somebody come and take it away. Like the dog catcher? But they'll give it a lobotomy or do experiments on it or something. What's the matter, Mom? <sighs> it's Mexico. Hi, I got chills. While you were filming, did you have any idea that you were part of one of the greatest films of all? No, no, you never do. Yeah. You know, I knew we had a beautiful script, mm -hmm. um, and I knew the little alien was just incredible. But yeah. you know, it's the audience that really makes a hit, and the marketing. It has to be marketed and and brought out at exactly the right time, and. The audience has to be, you know, there's so many things. Timing. That, but I have a great story from that. Shall yeah. I tell it? Yes. yes. we got some time. Okay. So I, I wasn't even supposed to go over to the, the kitchen sink. There was no kitchen sink. Okay. Um, I wasn't supposed to get up from the table. But when he said that thing about Mexico, I got so upset. And I thought, oh, I don't want my kids to see me cry. So I got up and left. Stephen said, why'd you leave? I said, well, I didn't want the kids to see me cry. He went, everybody, come in and build oh. a set, right? Build a set, and, and I need the oh. water to run, right? And then we're going to bring her around in this big close-up, and, and then I want you to say he hates Mexico. And all that happened right there in the moment. Amazing. You know, none of it was planned oh. out. But that's a great director. When, when he sees a moment that's real and he wants to expand right. on it, you know, He's not so locked into his storyboard that he can't just jump. What was it like stuff. working with Steven Spielberg? Well, genius. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. it like working with a genius who's like yeah. a kid? He's a genius he is who's like, like a, a kid. Yeah. And that's why I got the part, because I was like a kid. Right. You know, he told me, all, well, you know, you got the part because you were so vulnerable, like a little girl. What was the audition like for that? I didn't audition. I had auditioned for used cars. Fortunately, I didn't get that one. <laughs> um, but he plans very far ahead, and he knew the type of role he wanted, you know, for Mary. And so when ET came, they they called and offered it to me. Another oh story. Uh, so from the time I left Kansas mm -hmm. till the time I started in ET was just a little over five years. That's which is unheard of. That is unheard yeah. of. And did you just tell That's me it's, uh, something happened with ET that did it just go? <laughs> in an area in the, somewhere in the world? What are you talking about? <laughs> Something e you told me before the show, there was a story with E.T. that some child that you took to a 
Uh, oh, oh. Oh, the, we and were, the mom. And we the, were talking about right. the, was a great impact story. the impact that it. this picture has on the entire world. I've traveled the entire world and have such amazing stories, but this one woman came up to me with tears streaming down her face, and she said, Miss Wallace, I want you to know you've been a part of a miracle in my life. Her son was autistic. She had never heard him speak for 10 years. And she had taken him to see the re-release of E.T. And on the way home, he started saying every line that E.T. said. And she said, do you understand what that's like for a mother to hear her son that's speak amazing. after 10 years? It's Powerful. Amazing. But that's, Powerful. that's... I could see in your eyes. I know. It's still she, affecting I, you. <laughs> it, you know? It, it was very moving and still is to know that I'm part of a film that heals people. Yeah. And it's a timeless, it's a timeless film. Yeah. Let's oh, talk, it's our Wizard of Oz. Let's talk right, about exactly. the, another great film that you did. And I've heard that is one of the uh, best films that you love doing was Cujo. Well, now, I didn't love doing it. Okay. But it's but, my favorite film. My God, it almost killed me to do it. Okay. <laughs> this I didn't know. It was the hardest thing I've ever, ever done physically, emotionally, everything. But when I look at it, I'm incredibly proud of it. And I, I think I went about as far as I could go, honestly, as an actress. Is that, is that because you were able to, whatever the director called for, you were able to follow those directions to the T? Or were you able to improvise on your own on things? Well, half the film is improvisation. I mean, yeah. we followed a script, but when you're with a five-year-old kid and a dog, <laughs> <laughs> things happen every take. So, um, and you're whenever, in a car most of the time. Uh, oh, the mm. car. Well, that if car. I ever see another Pinto again in my life. <laughs> oh my <laughs> but you know, when the kid and the dog work in the same take, they print it, whether you're asleep or not. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so yeah. I had to be on, you know, and I, they treated me for exhaustion for about three weeks after that. Okay. Well, let's watch you in oh, this, this well. video. Okay. Cool. Dee Wallace and Kuja. Right. Coming. But stuck again. Doesn't everything in this car is broken? Alice said to get a new car. Sounds good to me. Damn this car. You pull while I push. Oh, I can't get it. Pull. trained to go after toys. Wow. So the, the trainer would go, dig for your toy, dig for your toy. <laughs> so they would arr, 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 be going like this, but we had to tie their tails down because they were wagging their tails because it was a big game for them. 
They were treated much better than I was. I just want you to know. <laughs> All the animal lovers out there. But what our so audience intense. doesn't know, when you're watching on a oh. monitor, you're... She jumped. Oh. She literally jumped. jumped. You still jump. My heart is I, like... Well, let's go to this. <laughs> yeah. So we can from, from, from dog to... To gentle. To gentle. To bear. The bear. Okay. Well, yeah. much of my work on film and off film is teaching people about love. Yay. I mean, that was about the love for my, my son. This is my latest passion project. This is Buffalopoulou. It's a little so bear. Cute. It's all based on brain science. To I don't know if you know, our brains are pretty much locked in by the time we're four years old. How we feel about ourselves and feel about how we are in the world and how our self-worth is in the world, done by four. Amazing. So I created this little beer. He says 14 really empowering statements in first person that your child hopefully says back to the bear. And that starts creating synapses where the child says, like, I am so loved and I love my body. Right. Well, let's, right. let's listen. I put it right next to my microphone. Do you get it? I listen. am a gift to the world. So um, the child says, I am a gift, gift to, the, to world. the world. That's great. That's, next right. That's a great I love idea. Me. I love me, which is the most important message. Um, I, I've taught for years, and um, I'm a clear audience channel. I have my own radio show on where people call in and talk to the channel. I can tell you from teaching and healing, the most important thing we can learn is to love who we are. Yeah. Sounds so simple. So you go, you go across the country teaching and healing. All over the world. And what was it, Claire? Claire, Claire Audient. I what hear. exactly is Claire Audient? I hear messages. Okay. Which everybody I can do, by the way. You right. Just, everybody can Claire do Claire Audient. Let me but, read a quote that was uh -oh. on, your, um, uh, hmm. on your website. Love yourself beyond anyone yes. or anything else. Love yourself so much that you can't do anything that doesn't make you love yourself more. Yes. Love yes, that. that's what I teach. Because when you do things that make you love yourself, you can't help but do things that are loving for everybody else. Because right. everything else makes you feel not love for yourself. Would you ever get uh, the naysayers but, that say the opposite, mm. saying you should? Oh yeah, sure, but I don't pay attention. <laughs> Good. I, look, I know the truth. I've taught the truth for for too long, and let me tell you, if all of us could learn to love ourselves, nobody would have to go join ISIS. Nobody would go. have to pick Archive. up a gun there you go. to make a point about anything. Bravo. No, it's not. It's not love that's doing that. It's hate and judgment. And the right. two things can't live. And that's why I think it's so important to start children off really? with that knowing within themselves. So when they are bullied, they have a core of strength within mm -hmm. themselves that they can go, no, I love who I am. Right. And, and this is who I am. But that's where great. did this all come for you? How did this, from acting, oh, gosh. I mean, where, can you just let us know where <clears throat> these ideas came from and why you have you know, I support. you know I I think um, <laughs> I think I just was born into a family um, <sighs> that was all about love nice. and yet where I was incredibly challenged to hold on to that my father was an alcoholic who committed suicide and yet my relationship with him was very special. My mother was so strong. My grandmother, who raised me mostly because my mom had to work, really strong women. Um, I had very early on a, a, a strong teaching in faith and family. Family, family, family. Yeah. There is nothing more important in my family That's than great. each other. Mm. Wow. Beautiful. Gee. Beautiful. <laughs> love Just, it. And what's I the bright that. light? Well, she's the bright light. <laughs> 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 
Bright Light is my autobiography taught through all of the big films and big directors that I've worked with, with the spiritual lessons that I've learned along the way. And I guarantee you, if you read it, you will read about yourself. Love it. Mm -hmm. I want to read it. So, <laughs> most gratifying for you, being an actor, um, teaching, um, um, do, bright light, writing, really? what, what do you find most gratifying for you? Well, I, I would say right now probably the healing work, but I believe that you heal and make the world better by who you are. And I take who I am into everything I do. That so, sense. like when I did E.T., I brought my light through Mary, right? Okay. Yes. I brought my light through Bapa, through my books. But were books. you cognitively aware of that at that time, or is this a new phenomenon for you that you're just thinking, that you've just written this book, where you, when you now look back on E.T., um, you're now thinking about it, but when you were doing E.T., were you consciously aware of what you're Absolutely. thinking Absolutely. The minute you read that script, I re I'll tell you exactly what I said. I called my agent. We got about one minute okay. left, just so you know. It's short. <laughs> I said, I don't know if this is going to do anything for me, but this movie will change the world, and I want to be a part of it. Wow. And we're so glad yeah. you were. Yeah. Um, so great. Oh, no. Wow. I didn't know, I know. This, the direction of this interview. <laughs> I love it. Never do with me. I told him like all over the place. <laughs> we, we, we thank you so much for oh, coming. It's so short. I know. I know it is too so short. Come back. We make this will a longer you, show. Will you yeah. come back sometime? Absolutely. Yay. You promise. Everyone heard that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you so very much thank again. You all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. All right. All right. Thank all of you. That's it for another show. So for our guests, Dee Wallace and Ty Babylonia and our director, George Montavo, and for the entire KBL crew, I'm Ken Boxer. Good night, everybody. And thank you again, all of you. Thank you. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. Terry Riken, your broker with a personal touch for all your real estate needs. Palazzo Restaurant, where people don't leave hungry or thirsty. Harbor View Inn, Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. The Eagle Inn, a family owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. And by Wendy Foster, La Quinta Inn and Suites, Taffy's Pizza, Country Catering, Meat Market and Deli. Lido's Takeout, Ice in Paradise, Perfect Computers, the Ken Boxer Live musical theme by Mr. Michael J. Leslie. at Ken Boxer Live. I'm Baron Ron Heron. Good night, everyone.